And I just said, you know what? I'm not missing zoo lights. I don't care. I'm going to zoo lights. I'm Maybe gonna watch, they're trying to tell you something, Brian. I'm going to work. I'm going to watch the first hour of this show. I'm going to go to zoo lights. I'm going to come back and and I'm going to pray that they've got the replay up and I can watch the rest and away we go. But I'm not missing zoo lights this year. So in fact, I went to zoo lights. It was great. Good. And I came home and by the grace of the good Lord mm-hmm. and all these folks at Bleach Report, the the replay was up immediately. So I got everything done. Everything was great. But the point is, I was here. I was not there. So I wasn't there. And I didn't go to the post-fight press conference. And because I was watching the rest of the show on delay, I didn't watch it either. Okay? So, what's the point? The point is, the main event of the show was MJF and Jay White. Now, we could talk about the angle that everybody hated. But the fact of the matter is, the match itself, once they got all of the uh, rigmarole out of the way, once they actually had a wrestling match, I thought they had a great main event. And uh, MJF ended up retaining the title. He didn't bury Jay White, uh, you I'll idiots. Never recover. I'll okay. Never recover. No. But here's here's the point. So MJF is, uh, you know, he doesn't do a lot of crazy stuff. But every now and then he does something crazy. He did a, a Fosbury flop dive a couple of uh, That's weeks ago. That's which actually, yeah, highest, he used to do that all the time on the Indies. But here's the point. He, he did not come to AEW and just start doing Fosbury flops every match. It's no. like, we didn't see it for three and a half years or whatever before he finally pulled that thing out of his pocket. So during the match, he goes to put old Jay White on the announce table. And the announce table broke as he was putting him on. And, you know, these fans, all they want are their stupid tables. I've seen, and it's every company. It's WWE, it's AEW. Like, you'll do all of this crazy stuff, and these these fans still chant, we want tables. It's like, dude, this guy got sliced all the heck with broken glass and barbed wire, but you want a table. Okay, whatever. So anyway, once he put that, once that table broke, it was like, oh man, time stood still. And they didn't have another table. So, either, uh, either this crowd's turning on a match, or I'm going up top and I'm doing that elbow anyway. Sure, all this was going through his mind. So he goes up top. He stands on the post. And he's looking down, and there's Jay White on the floor! And he does a flying elbow. And, you know, I reviewed the show last night, and I was like, hey, man, you know, every now and then you do something crazy, and, you know, everything turns out all right. And he threw the guy back in, and they kept doing the match, and, and everything was fine. What I did not know was he practically killed himself on that spot. He, uh, I guess, I, you know, the post-fight presser, I mean, he was a mess. And, uh, you know, comes out today that this is not like some storyline. His hip was dislocated. He dislocated his hip. His shoulder's all messed up. And, you know, he was, I'm sure, in agony at the pay-per-view or at the uh, press conference. And they had to try to put everything back together again. And, uh, you know, hopefully there's nothing serious going on right here. But um, your AEW world champion uh, just about uh, destroyed himself because a table broke and uh, he had to do a flying elbow off the post to the floor. I don't ever recommend doing a flying elbow off the post to the floor, everybody. But you know what? Things happen. So uh, all the best to him. Hopefully he's all right. But uh, that was the big main event angle. And the big aftermath is, is hopefully this guy is okay as we head into Dynamite on Wednesday. Their most valuable asset, the biggest thing that they have going for them, and the center of their universe right now with how they've done their programming, everything revolves around MJF, sometimes too much. But the fact of the matter is, regardless, it does revolve around him. So obviously you don't want him to miss any time. And you you said it, you didn't have to do that. You didn't actually have to go up to the top. And now people might have pause in case something like that happens to them in their match. Maybe you grab this chair and you set up a spot out there or something like that. You have that backup plan in your mind because, again, you never know when a bad injury could happen. And, you know, hip injuries and shoulder injuries, things like that, you know, once they slip out of place, makes it a lot easier as things go along for them to slip out of place. And hips with wrestlers can't be a good thing anyway. I was always amazed on how 
long Bobby Eaton lasted and how he was able to walk up until the time that he passed. And just all of the, the moves that he would do, those Alabama jams and all that sort of stuff, just an amazing amount of brutality. And MJF doesn't do that. And I think that's something that you pointed out last night on the Brian and Vinny show that should not be glossed over. The less you do the more you end up getting out of it once you do it. And obviously some guys are wired for different things. Darby Allen, a great example of that. You're never going to be able to slow him up or make it not do some of the stuff that makes him who he is. But, you know, coming up with most wrestlers, again, MJF is a great example on getting the most out of it because it depends on the time and the place and the psychology of doing that move. So, um... We're going to go over the results here. I I don't have time in the next two minutes to talk about uh, Jay White, but I'll do that after the break. So, uh, and we'll talk about the angle, because I'm sure everybody wants to talk about angle. But uh, quick results, I mean, listen, I know there were some complaints about this or that, but I mean, if you're a fan of wrestling, I mean, there were a bunch of great matches on the show. Eddie Kingston beat Jay Lethal in a very good match on the pre-show to retain the Ring of Honor title. And he's putting all he's putting all of his belts on the line in the Continental Classic. And the winner is coming out of it as the, I guess, Ring of Honor Triple Crown Champion. So all of those belts are going to be merged together. And yes, there is a Continental Championship that is going to be part of the uh, the deal. Claudio beat Buddy Matthews. But you can't travel. That's not intercontinental. About that You're stuck on your own continent. We'll talk about the uh, MGF match later on. Sting and Darby and Adam Copeland beat Luch Source, Nick Wayne, and Christian when... This despicable, disgusting, horror of a man. Christian walked out on his team, and Luchasaurus was defeated. Very good match. Darby now on his way to uh, Nepal to train to climb Mount Everest. But uh, presumably he'll be he'll be back, because I guess it's several months before climbing season. There is a climbing season. We had Orange Cassidy and John Moxley. Great match, Orange Cassidy. Ended up beating Moxley with a series of uh, orange punches in the beach break. Excellent match. He retains the title. And uh, we'll go on after the break with more Observer Live. Um, Tony See Storm. Jingu was booking in that thread? Look at this thing. I'm not looking at the thread right oh now. Oh, my God. I got plenty. Ugh. Tony Storm beat Akar Shida, AW Women's title. And uh, everybody was very happy. They love the gimmick. I did not like this match. It's turned into... All Tony Storm. It's one thing when you got like the gimmick that's all hijinks, but then you go have a, a Tony Storm match because like she's really good. But now it's like we got a gimmick and then the gimmick permeates the match. Yeah. And uh, it was just. I like Tony Storm doing her gimmick. I don't want gimmick Tony Storm, and that's what it's turned into. And I think it was a silver uh, serving dish, Brian. Oh, get out of here. It was a frying pan. It's not a frying pan. A frying that pan for little funny. people is what it that was. That really would. It don't give them any ideas with this character. She might shove a frying pan over there just That's for the fine. lap of That's Whatever. I mean, if we're going to go that far. Oh, then we had no. Ricky Starks and Big Bill retaining the titles over FTR, Roosh, and Drillistico and House of Black in a ladder match. I mean, if you love. And you know what was actually great? I had one complaint, which was for two thirds of this match, nobody was trying to actually win the match. Yeah. It was, hey, let's get a ladder and then do a spot. And there was even a spot where the ladder was set up for Malachi to climb and win. And he said, no, no, not yet. We must do a spot. He actually yeah. said, we're not climbing right now. And he did a spot. Brian, uh, and I So gotta, if you think I, I feel bad for that guy not winning, think again. I can't one-up you either, but I can give you an even one. Dax Harwood, when he was the only one in the ring and everybody's cleared out, he picks up the ladder and he puts it on his head. Nobody's yes. even near him yet, and he starts to spin and then obviously led to Commander. And then everybody runs in to get hit by that. the ladder. Yes, it's yes. just eh, sometimes Ridiculous. you do too much. But you know what? You know what I will say? What it was was a spot fest, and if you've been watching ladder matches of late, I mean... I'm not going to say it was like totally safe, but by by modern 2023 ladder match standards, they did all sorts of great spots, and none of them were exceedingly dangerous. I mean, the most dangerous one was probably the Gonzo bomb on a ladder bridge, but even that was like, you know, Brody always protects people on that move. 
Matthew and Justice would be offended uh, on how few dangerous spots there no, were. No, I was very happy. We had Statlander losing the title to Julia Hart in a three-way with Sky Blue. And, like, nobody expected Julia to win. And then when she did, they went nuts. Because they've wanted Julia to be champion for a while. They even cheered her versus Statlander the last time they had a title match. And so when she actually won pitting Sky Blue... They went crazy, and there was no heat early, but they had heat at the end, so I can say nothing bad about this match. They did a good job. They announced the signing of Will Ospreay, although he did note that he will be finishing up with New Japan first, so uh, he's exclu- I shouldn't say exclusive, but he's going to be finishing up everything through February, and then he'll be heading to AEW, and he wants Wembley August 25th. So that seems to write itself. No post-show outrage uh, or banter over Will Ospreay being the signee as opposed to somebody else. Well, no, because that was a huge signing, quite frankly. Then we had Swerve and Hangman in probably, probably the most gruesome match ever seen on a Major League North American event. I mean... Staple guns, stapling things to Swerve's face. Emphasize glass. the staple guns because that's how they started. Yeah, they started with that. Uh, one guy bleeding a fountain and the other guy laying underneath his face to drink the blood out of the fountain. My, my. I see my, my kids drinking out of a fountain and I'm trying to tell them, don't get too close to the spigot. Other kids put their mouth on that. Yeah, there's too much iron in there. Wait till this you try the blood. Golly. Ooh. And we had glass, and we had cinder blocks, and barbed wire, barbed wire an accidental barbed wire to the face. Mm. I mean, this was just... And then these absolute maniac fans, then they want fire. They weren't <laughs> satisfied. <laughs> well, you got, maybe hey, if you don't ask, you never know. So Swerve ends up uh, hitting him with a cinder block, hanging him by the neck by a chain from the ring post, and winning. Hangman has now beaten him twice. It is a Texas death match, unlikely to ever be topped. No. Even Moxie was like, I'm going to barf. <laughs> I don't know if he actually said that. I doubt it. Then we had the Young Bucks. I don't know. I've seen some pretty violent things and been front row for some violent things. When he stuck his head underneath there and it was like, nah, and he actually started getting the blood all over him and in his mouth, that was... That was something. That was certainly, uh, that was a moment. This was a spectacle of a show. There is so much stupidity in this uh, this YouTube chat right now, but I'm going to deal with that later. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.